Mr. Secretary. Uh, thank you very much, Governor, for uh, the introduction. And thanks to, to all of you for giving me the time. I think I would be remiss if I uh, didn't uh, give special recognition to Governor Hutchinson, who is a uh, uh, alumnus of the Department of Homeland Security and um, whose uh, legacy is something that we've been very proud, uh, quite frankly, to uh, continue into the future and uh, and build upon. Um, so I, I wanted to um, mention that at the very outset. Uh, I uh, have with me uh, three important uh, individuals uh, whom I'd like to introduce. Uh, hopefully you will know uh, their names uh, even better as the days and weeks progress. Uh, to my right uh, is Tim Moore, um, the um, Senior Counselor for Cybersecurity in the Office of the Secretary, Brandon Wales, uh, the Acting Director of our Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, who's been doing an extraordinary uh, job in leading our department's cybersecurity efforts, and Ava Malona, who is our new Assistant Secretary uh, for Intergovernmental Affairs, who will um, ensure uh, that our partnership um, is lived on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, the, um, uh, uh, there's no, um, there, there's that saying that we should never waste a, a, a crisis uh, in order to make a substantial progress. And I know that the Colonial Pipeline uh, a breach really galvanized the public's attention in an unprecedented way because um, people thought that uh, one of their basic commodities was uh, threatened, their ability to, um, frankly, fill their gas tanks uh, and um, uh, address their fuel needs uh, was jeopardized with the attack. And we saw the lines in gas stations and the like. But I'd like to um, identify another uh, breach that was fortunately not successful that really should have gripped uh, the nation. And that was a cyber attack uh, against a water facility, a water treatment facility in, in Florida. And I cite it um, because its intent was not to gain a profit, not to make money, but to actually um, uh, intervene in the treatment of the water and have that treatment facility deliver to its resident consumers water that was untreated, dangerous to uh, the consumer's health and could have cost thousands of lives. And it was the success, or I should say the failure of the cyber attack that kept that from the, the public's consciousness, which is a, you know, something for which we are very grateful. But the, the attempt should have galvanized the entire country's attention. Um, I think everyone on this call knows that we have to take cybersecurity um, so very seriously. Uh, I have identified it as one of our most urgent priorities in the Department of Homeland Security. And I would say that we have three um, vectors of activity together um, that we need to embark upon. Um, one is, um, quite frankly, uh, for all of you to ensure that the resources of your respective states are invested in addressing this. Two is our support to you and um, in your efforts. And I'll talk uh, in a moment about what we at, at CISA, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency can do. And the third is frankly just the cooperation, um, the combination uh, of the first the first two. Um, we are working very closely with the National Chamber of Commerce, with the Small Business Administration, with Chambers of Commerce's and uh, SBA's 
and community organizations all around the country to raise the visibility of this threat and to communicate some of the most basic blocking and tackling that needs to be done uh, to raise the defense bar. And while some of that blocking and tackling is rather routine and ordinary and easily accessible, its impact uh, should not be minimized. Because what we do in raising that bar is we shrink uh, the community of attackers that can actually succeed. And that's what this is all about. Because with enough resources, with enough time, the, the very sophisticated are gonna get through. We just have to shrink the world of attack um, uh, exponentially at this point. And so it's a question of not only how to reach those organizations, uh, but also how to reach the ordinary consumer, given I think what um, one of you mentioned at the very outset, the interconnectedness, the increasing interconnectedness of all of us through the, um, the internet of things, um, through, you know, we, we say in, cyber, in the cyber realm, we're only as strong as our weakest link because of that interconnectedness. Um, we really, we really have to raise that bar in each and everyone's home when they have some uh, device of connectivity. And we want to work with you um, uh, on that. Um, secondly, we have a tremendous amount of support that we could provide. Of course, we have now increased the amount um, of funding uh, through our FEMA grants that must be dedicated to cybersecurity. We increased that to a total of approximately $77 million. We very well may increase that again next year, but many of the FEMA grant funds uh, obviously pass through uh, the auspices of the governors. And so whether additional FEMA grant funds should be dedicated to mis this mission set is um, a prerogative and authority that you yourselves have, and we defer to your judgment in assessing the needs within your states. But we ask uh, or we offer um, CISA's resources and capabilities uh, to assist you. We have um, teams that respond to events. We share information from events all over the country uh, with participants in our information sharing architecture. We can provide um, uh, utilities and critical infrastructure with very important best practices, and we can do assessments and provide recommendations with respect to this threat of the strengthening of their infrastructure. And then I think lastly, if we do this together, um, I think we can really uh, raise the bar. 